I'm making sausage. I wouldn't be making sausage if it weren't for Tammy of Nutmeg Notebook because this is her recipe and I thought I'm gonna, I'm gonna try it. I'm doubling the recipe that I'll be putting um, up for you. And let me tell you what I've just added. This is a half a cup of ground flaxseed. That adds uh, omega-3 uh, fatty acids to my diet. I add as well as healthy fat and healthy protein. I just added nutritional yeast, does the same thing, has B vitamins, especially if it's fortified, and um, proteins. And then I'm adding to that two cups. Well, actually first, let me put in the seasonings and I'll tell you what this is in a minute, but, and quantities will be listed, but I have in here sage, Italian spices. Uh, let me see, what else? Onion powder, garlic powder, um, fennel seed. What am I trying to do? I'm trying to emulate a country sausage because I'm not going to make that for Easter, but I have an entire brunch. I'm going to be putting together. So I have four cups of boiling water. Again, your recipe will be halves of all of this. And I've added to the pan the seasoning, the um, nutritional yeast, and the flaxseed. Now I'm adding four cups of rolled oats. And in my case, they are gluten-free and organic rolled oats. Now, I'm going to keep stirring this, and Tammy says, and the person she got her recipe from, uh, Carrie um, Blumenthal, said you're just going to keep stirring and mixing this until you have a hot mess. I just loved that description. And I was watching Tammy make this, and there was a point at which she said, oh, now I know what she means. This looks like a hot mess. <laughs> so I'm just, oh, it's wafting that aroma of country sausages. Uh, normally, I would be using a much smaller pan. Well, not much smaller, but this is my eight-quart stock pot. But I wanted enough surface for four cups of water, four cups of oats, and a lot of stirring room. Um, and I didn't want to do that in one of my smaller saucepans. If I were using half the recipe, I could use my, gosh, four quart, five quart, uh, just saucepan. All right, I'm gonna keep stirring because what's gonna happen is that the flax seed is an egg substitute. If you've ever made anything that is plant-based with no egg, and plant-based means not only no meat of any kind or fish of any kind, but no dairy of any kind that includes butter and no eggs. So why? Well, watch one of my cooking videos. I'm not gonna go into that today, but I have a number of videos online that describe the, um, the effects of those foods that have been shown to be actually deleterious to our health in one way or another or a number of ways. The healthiest thing we can do is feed our microbiome. That's the bugs in our gut, three to five pounds of them. Um, and um, the only thing they eat is fiber. And then they create these magical metabolites called short chain fatty acids. And the only thing they eat is this kind of thing. Herbs, spices, fruits, vegetables, grains, legumes, seeds, nuts, all that really good, what I call comfort food. The foods that kind of stabilize your mood, make you feel happy, nature's antidepressants, as well as appetite suppressants. So here you go. Ah, I see, it's becoming a, <laughs> a bit of a hot mess. This is so cool. So I'm gonna keep cooking until it gets thick enough for me to then let it cool, and then I'll bring you back on when I start to shape it. Let it cool and start forming them. I could form them in one of two ways. I could form them as a sausage, and she has a video, and it's not even the initial one with this, 
uh, primary preparation where she uses rice paper, Chinese or Japanese rice paper, rolls the sausage and it's almost like a sausage skin. Now I haven't tried that, but I'm going to with this and you'll see, you'll see what we think of it. I'm going to be making patties and I'm going to be making the sausage shape. And I have a seven-year-old and 10-year-old grandson. The adults will eat anything because they know that when they come here, they're gonna have things they're not used to. But the kids will just taste something and spit it out. Um, remember when we ate anything that was put on our plate? That doesn't happen anymore. Uh, at least tried it. Um, yeah. So. I think we're getting somewhere because now things are sticking. They're getting thick and gloppy. Um, the, the aroma is very country sausage. This is so great. And I'm going to go for just a minute more. Then I'm going to turn it off, bring you back on after it's cooled. And we'll see what we get out of this. Isn't this fun? Wouldn't this be great? And this, the reason I doubled the recipe is that I'll get probably, oh, I don't know, if I make a small enough sausage patty, I'll get, I believe, 12 of them. Well, if I have seven people for Easter and I want to have some leftover because Tammy of Nutmeg Notebook said they freeze beautifully, why would I go through this without enough left to have some in the freezer to pop out any time I want the healthiest sausage on the planet, right? Okay, I think we're done. This is what it looks like. Just cooked oatmeal bound by flaxseed. I was starting to tell you that flaxseed is an egg substitute. One tablespoon of flaxseed to three tablespoons of water mixed up will create a gel that in many recipes will act the way an egg would to bind things. Well, we have a quarter of a cup of, no, I'm sorry, a half of a cup of flax here. So this is going to bind it beautifully. You know what I'm tempted to do? I'm gonna burn myself. Mm. Ooh, oh my goodness, that's really good. Oh my. Okay, this is gonna be fun. <laughs> I'll get back to it a bit. Okay, I'm back. While I was letting this cool, I also made tonight's dinner. You can find it on my website, nansimmonsen.com, S-I-M-O-N-S-E-N, Simmonsen. Um, and this is my favorite, um, Nan's favorite mushroom saute and gravy. I think that's what I call it. More broth and it becomes a gravy, but we're gonna put this with um, cooked potatoes and carrot and um, uh, sauteed onion and make it dinner. But I had to get this done because I'm going to move this out of the way because that's dinner and my husband will be home probably like now. <laughs> anyway, all right. So, all right. The burner is so hot. Sorry. Oh, no. Can't find it now. Huh. That's weird. Okay, I was going to get a trivet, a heat trivet that would displace the heat, but I'm just not going to worry about it. But the burn is really hot. So, what I have is a pan of getting hard <laughs> stuff. And I have a bowl of water, and I have two ways of making my patty. One is the lid of a bell jar, the wide mouth bell jar. This was a Ziploc bag. It's easier than using two sheets of, or one sheet of um, saran wrap, uh, because cling wrap, because that's so, it's so clingy. And I just cut the top off to make it more pliable. I'll put this in here, and it doesn't even go in. You just lay it in there. I want to, I have to turn you down and, and I'm just not going to worry about being visible because I want you to see this. Oh, this will, this will work. And I'm not going to do them all. I'm just going to do a few to show you what I'm doing. I, oh, this has to go in there. There we go. Okay. So I take a measure of it. I believe, and you know what I want to do? I'm going to see 
what that looks like. Tammy uses a third of a cup. Sorry. She said it's a third of a cup measure, and that was good to know. All right. And that will look like, let me dump this one out. That will look like about this. And see, press it in. And then, look how easy it is to turn out a beautifully made patty. There is my sausage patty. I should have filled it a little more evenly because it's a little flat on one end. I'll do it again, about a third of a cup. And I'm not gonna measure it from this point on. I've got the feel. And press it in. Turn it out, plastic comes right off, and I have a beautiful patty that I'm then going to saute and brown, but I'm going to show you, I'm sorry, here, but I'm going to show you that, there we go, one more time, because I'm not sure what you got to see, so put this on, fill it up, a little more than a half, a third of a cup, I think. And still, it's still pliable. If I let these things sit much longer, they will become um, rather rigid, and then, then, then probably break apart somewhat when I try to work with them. And there you go. Now, another tool I could use is this hamburger press. It would give me a larger patty. I'm going to put plastic on because. When I pull this up, I want it to come off easily. And let's see. I thought I was going to need the water. Well, maybe I do because my hands are getting sticky. And with that one, I would simply press in. But you know what? This is so wide and so big. I'm going to show you, but I'm, I think I'm going to put it back in and not use it because this is a handy gadget. Believe it or not, I got it at Marshall's for $6, $5.99. Marshall's is fun to go into their kitchen area and see what great things they have. Look at this. Pull it out, turn it over, pull it off. Now, if I wanted a hamburger as opposed to a breakfast sausage, wouldn't that be perfect? But I'm not going to do that. So I'm actually just going to transfer this into here because it's just too big but now you've seen something that is helpful to know uh, you can get things like this online at amazon i'm going to make the rest of these and then i'll get back to you with my with the completion of this entire process but i have plenty of these to make so I'm going to keep going. Bye-bye. <laughs> Hello, I'm back. So I have made 12 patties and I made two, four, six of these sausage rolls. And as I described, these have become quite firm and I wanted to make them quickly or they would have become firm before I was finished. So I wanted to show you this layout. They've been sitting here cooling. And now I'm going to show you how to make a sausage skin while I'm heating the, um, the, the patties. They should be heated in a medium high, on a medium high heat, on a non-skid stick surface. Make sure that you look for the safer ones. This is Scanpan, made S-E-A-N-P-A-N, made in Denmark. It's one of the five top safe materials. This is a titanium ceramic um, that coats a heavy metal and so it conducts heat well. Nothing sticks on it. It's really easy to work with. We're going to be heating these for at least four minutes. And Tammy in her recipe says, don't heat them for less time. Heat them long enough for them to brown at least though four minutes. She said, if you take them up too quickly. Now, Hers were probably not as firm as these are. 
I'm gonna raise this, I think you've seen enough. Hi, I'm back. Well, I made 12 patties. Let me turn this down. I'll show you where I had them. I had them on a tray. Put all of this out of the way. And I've put two, four, six, eight of the patties in my scan pan. It's a titanium ceramic non-stick. Uh, Non-sticks are fine, but you wanna get the safe ones. Google the safest. This was one of the top five safe ceramic pans. They're a bit pricey. They're um, made in Denmark, but I like, I have three of them and I love them. Um, nothing sticks to them and it's easy to work with. As Tammy said in her recipe, they need to be on for a minimum of four minutes. I've set a timer and I want to show you the other shape that I created and that was this sausage shape because she showed something kind of fun. And that is how to make an actual sausage with the skin and all. This is torn, but I think it's gonna be okay. This is a Vietnamese spring roll rice wrapper. The ingredients are nothing but rice, cassava, water, and salt. On her um, video, she said that she looked for and finally was able to find a brown rice wrapper um, that had, that was this, I'll call it pure in terms of ingredients, whole food plant-based. I'm not too concerned about this one being brown rice. Uh, the white rice is okay. Uh, it's no GMO, um, doesn't mean it's organic, but it's also gluten-free. So it's everything that I would look for. So I've dipped one of the wrappers in water rather quickly and I put it on a plate. I'm gonna take the sausage, and again, these, these feel like a sausage, and I'm going to start the rolling, but I'm gonna do it like the burritos. If you've ever been to Chipotle, you see what they do? They start a roll, they fold in the sides, and then they continue to roll just like a burrito, and this is what I have. Oops, I have this little piece here that I'm not crazy about, but I'm just gonna glue it down because the rice paper becomes sticky when it's wet. Okay, and it actually becomes very soft and rather pliable. I'm, ah, I don't know what happened there, but we're not gonna worry about it. And then I'll show you what I'm gonna do with this when I take these off. All right, and while we're waiting for that. I'm gonna do another. The timer's going to tell me when to, to um, turn them. I can feel the heat is decently high. And what we're going to do is we're going to brown both sides. And then I can use these days from now. I can refrigerate them or I can put them in the freezer and pull them out, warm them in the microwave or on a pan for just a few minutes and I can um, crumble them over my luncheon salads because I make these landscapes of a salad where we ha I have chopped greens. You can find that on my website um, under recipes. You'll find it on my website under cooking show and I actually show you how I make these landscape chopped salads. Well, I could crumble it over that. I could have it for a quick breakfast. Um, and with a little maple glaze or all by itself. Now, my timer is telling me that I'm finished and I'm gonna set it again for another four minutes. Ah, okay. Turn it over, there's no problem with any sticking at all. And yes, they're browning nicely. Well, maybe not as nicely as I'd like. So I'm gonna leave it on one more minute. Let me take a look at this one. Oh, I see. Well, you know what? Just like a regular sausage where it's raised, it's not going to brown as well. All right. This is so much fun. Um, my daughter came over to bring the Easter eggs that she thankfully, well, I was thankful to her for having filled them with 
I'm not filling them with candy. We filled them with coins. And she filled a hundred for me. Anyway, she tasted this and she thought, and she said, oh my goodness, that's really good. She's the one that brought up the, um, the consideration of having a maple glaze on them because quite often you'll get just a, a, a hint of, of um, sweetness in a, a sausage or it's served with a little maple syrup. Okay, so I just set it for four minutes. Oh, you know what I did? I made a huge mistake. Well, now you're gonna see. Well, you know what? I'm gonna see if this is workable. This was supposed to be in the water for seconds. Let's see what happens. I'm gonna roll this in it. I'm going to turn it into the burrito. Hey, I was able to do that, okay. Not a total disaster. And now I'm gonna roll it. There. Now, what's going to happen when I take these off, I'm going to do this batch next because what she described, and she got this idea of making sausages um, with skins. She got this idea from um, Forks Over Knives. The Forks Over Knives cookbook has this bratwurst sausage that uses these skins. Oops, take it out, ma'am. And um, she tried it, and she said that everybody was amazed at how they resembled a real sausage with the, the um, that interesting outer crunch and their inner moisture. So we'll see. I think I've made these a little too big, but I'm gonna work with it anyway. Even if I can't turn in the ends, we're gonna be fine. The heat of the pan is radiating and I'm getting a little bit um, too much heat on my wrist, but I'm just gonna keep going because I'm on a roll. All right, look at that. It's like a sausage, people. And she said when it cooks, it the rice skin adheres to the sausage. It just kind of um, shrinks and becomes um, almost translucent, where you, you can't even tell there was something on it. You just know that there's a skin of some kind. Isn't that interesting? How people find these things, I don't know. I've, been, I've spent a lifetime cooking. I've always loved to cook, but I don't create recipes well. So quite often I will look through recipes for an idea. I'll usually look at three or four. Let's say I have okra and I wanna do a jambalaya and I'll look for a jambalaya recipe. I'll look at three or four of them. I'll come up with what I will like because of, you can tell if you've cooked a while what is going to serve you well. But those, I can't say that that is um, original. And therefore, I always give credit where credit is due. Okay, that's my timer. I'm gonna turn it off. There we go. And I'm going to take these off. But, excuse me, I wanna take them off and put them on the rack. Sorry for the noise. So that they cool off properly. Let me show you what I'm doing. There we go. I just put this wrap down. I'm gonna take off our sausages. Oh, look at how beautifully that browned. Nice. This way they're cooling. That's the value of a wrap. They're cooling without steaming. If they go directly onto a surface and they can't, um, and the heat can't escape, it will simply steam the bottom. And then basically soften it, cookies and anything else that you bake. So wire racks are very handy. All right, now here goes. Same thing, medium high. I'm going to put one of these in to soak. Oh, I already have. And, okay, I'm gonna leave the pan for just a second. 
while I wrap this. The instructions on the package say take it out quickly, but you know what? They're actually a little easier to work with if you take them out a little less quickly. And, oh, yes, you can see, all right. And tuck them in. This one broke. I'm going to actually glue them together with this skin. There. Well, this is a little funky. This may be my tester because it's not really adhering. But it's staying together somewhat. All right. Get rid of the crumbs. I'm going to lower the heat a little. I think this heat is a little high, even though my stove says it's medium. It's a little high for medium. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right. And I might as well conserve space. I have four more of these to do. So I think I will call it a day with these. Give it four minutes and that's it. All right. I was gonna ask if you have any questions, but that doesn't work, does it? No, whoops. Oh. All right. So this is what we're doing. The, the um, skins are going to brown very lightly and you don't put them near each other because they stick. The cooking is actually helping prevent the, um, them from sticking. And yeah, they will. The minute they touch, they simply adhere to each other because they're still um, moist and wet. We're drying them out by cooking them. I'll turn them um, more often than I'm going to these patties because I'm going to get the edges. Gosh, I basically created four edges um, by the way I created the sausage and that'll make it a little easier to turn them and to um, for them to maintain their um, evenness on each of those four planes. I think that's it. Uh, when we're, everything is finished, I'll give you a picture of the finished product. Thank you for hanging in with me and we'll see you soon. Bye.